Sounds like a good idea. How to get started testing with a screen reader with Steve Barnett. Alicamp 2022. Alicamp would like to thank our gold sponsors Intopia, Salesforce and Telstra, and silver sponsors ANZ, Deloitte Digital and Coles. This is Sounds Like a Good Idea. How to get started testing with a screen reader. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm a senior technical digital accessibility analyst at Xero. That means I'm a front end developer who specializes in accessibility and usability. You can find me on the web at nagakoza, that's N A G A dot co dot za, where I write about front end development, accessibility, and sometimes use weird metaphors like crab claws or Dungeons and Dragons. True story. Chapter one Introduction Why test? and a demo. Why test with a screen reader? Well, for me, there are two big reasons. Number one is that the people who use our products use screen readers. Maybe there's a few of them. Maybe there's a lot of them. Maybe they are blind or low vision. Maybe they're not. Maybe they have to use a screen reader to access the web, or maybe they choose to because they prefer to hear a page read out than to read it with their eyes. But People who use the web use screen readers, which means some of the people who use our product will be using screen readers. Reason number two for me is that it highlights problems quickly and clearly. Scanning through a page visually, we might not notice if link text is not so great or repeated, for example. But when you're checking a page with a screen reader, it quickly becomes clear if all the links say, click here, click here, click here, click here. Disclaimer, I'm a tester, not an everyday user. Does me testing stuff with a screen reader mean that I somehow have a deep understanding of somebody's lived experience of using this kind of technology every day? No, of course not. And I think it would be a bit silly to pretend that it did. But can my testing uncover some of the same barriers that an everyday user of this tech might encounter in their browsing? I think yes. And for me, that's a really good reason to get started testing with a screen reader. Short and speedy, one, two, three, four, demo. I'm going to use VoiceOver on a Mac because that's the computer I've got. And I want to have a look at the WebAIM Million web page. OK, so let's jump over there. This, by the way, is a good thing to check out if you haven't seen it before. A um, report on the top one million web pages and the, the uh, state of accessibility of them. Uh, spoilers, mm, it's not great. Okay, so I said one, two, three, four. Uh, let me start my screen reader. Voice over on Firefox. Web aim, the web aim million, the 2022 report on the accessibility of the top 1 million home pages window. I'm going to tap control to make my screen reader be quiet. I'm going to check, first of all, number one, the title. Okay, it says it's, as you as you may have heard, it's the web aim million 2020 report on accessibility of the top million home pages. Hmm. Does that represent the content and the purpose of this web page. Hmm. Yes, it does. OK, number two, check the H1, the heading level one, the main heading of the page. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut to jump down the page through the headings. Heading level two, visit it, link, image, web aim. heading level two, main navigation, heading level one, two items, the web aim million, the 2022 report on the accessibility of the top one million home pages. Thank you, whatever. OK, heading level one, the web aim million, the 2022 report on the accessibility of the top million home pages. Cool. So that's pretty similar to the title, which is good because the H1 is also supposed to describe the content or the purpose of the page. Um, it's not the f the H1 is not the first heading of the page, but that's okay. Um, so let's jump through a few more headings again using the keyboard shortcuts. Heading level two, article contents. Heading level two, introduction. Heading level two, the sample. Okay, so I'm going through these things that look like headings are being announced as headings, so that's great. Heading level three, site lookup. Hmm. So I've gone down a heading level now to heading level three. Is site lookup a subsection of the sample section? Hmm, yes, it is. And it looks like it is too. Heading level three, method. Is the method a subsection of the heading level two, the sample section? Hmm, yes, it is. Heading level two, detected errors. Okay, now I'm onto the next heading level two, onto a new section of the content. Great. Number four test is interactive elements on the page. So I'm going to start pressing the tab key and jump between interactive things, focusable things like links, buttons, and form fields. 
Visit it. Link. WCAG2. Okay. Link. Low contrast text. Does the link text seem like it indicates the where I'll go when I follow the link? Does it describe the destination? Low contrast text. It's a page of theirs about contrast. Yep. Okay, cool. Visit it. Link. Alternative text. Is that pointing in a page that's talking about alternative text? Looks like yes. Visit it. Link. Headings are the primary mechanism used by screen reader users to navigate content. Is that linking to a page that kind of is described by this link text? Yes. Um, this is the result of their survey about how people navigate, uh, which is what we're doing right now. <gasps> Inception. Voice over off. Okay. Let's go back to the slides. That was a very quick run through. Now I'm going to kind of break it down for you. And then at the end, I'm going to do the demo again so that we can kind of join the dots, close the loop, some other metaphor that's very appropriate. Chapter two, testing tips. What to test and what good sounds like. Number one, testing the page title. Does it describe the contents or purpose of the page? Mm, that's... That's it. Number two, testing the H1, the heading level one. Is it the first heading on the page? Should be most of the time, but it's okay if it's not, if it's still clear what's going on. Does it describe the contents or purpose of the page? And is it similar to the title? As you can tell, that's a very similar question to the title question. Uh, so it's okay if the two are similar. They don't have to be identical and hmm, maybe they shouldn't be, but as long as they're kind of similar, it's okay. Number three, testing the headings. Is everything that looks like a heading marked up as a heading? And are the headings nested correctly? We saw on the Web A Million page that any of the text that was big and bold was marked up as a heading. That's great. That means a screen reader user is getting the same information uh, as a sighted user not using a screen reader. Are the headings nested correctly? That was the uh, H3s, which are part of the section of the H2s. The sample was the big section, and the stuff inside of it was subsections. So we went from H2, H3, H3, nested correctly. Great stuff. Number four, test everything else. Lol, OMG, what scream emoji? Okay, that seems like a lot. Maybe let's, let's take a pause there, have a little break. Aside. The two modes of desktop screen readers. Browse mode. In this mode, the page is read out in the HTML source order from top to bottom. There are single key shortcuts that let you jump around the page to headings, links, images, and more. One of these keyboard shortcuts was what I was using to jump around the headings. Forms mode or focus mode, depending on the screen reader you're using different names for a very similar thing. This is where the person uses the tab key to move through the page, jumping from focusable element to focusable element, things like links, buttons, and form fields. Something important to note is that text, images, um, tables, which are also like fancy text, uh, and disabled form elements and buttons don't receive focus, and they shouldn't. So if you're in forms mode, we don't expect to be able to tab these elements. We'll just jump over them to the next link, button, or form field. Okay, let's try again. Number four, testing everything else for real this time. Well, I mean, maybe a better name for number four is, number four, testing interactive elements, meaning links, buttons, and form fields. What to test? Well, we want to check, number one, can I reach it and use it? Can I use my keyboard to get to that link? Can I press that button? Can I enter text in that form field? Number two, does it have an accessible name? If it's a button and it's got text, that's probably going to be the accessible name. If it's a button with just an icon, we want to check that there's an accessible name, that there's a text alternative for the image or um, an ARIA label supplied behind the scenes, and it has an accessible name. Number three, does it have a good name? Hmm, what does good mean, Steve? Hmm, that's an excellent question, me, thank you. Well, what's good text for a link? Hmm, links go places. So the link text should describe the destination of the link. What's good text for a button? 
Hmm, well, buttons do stuff. So the button text or the button accessible name should describe the action. What's going to happen when I press this button? Am I going to do a search? Am I going to publish? Am I going to save? You know, often something verb-like. What's a good name for a field? Well, fields gather data from the user. So the field name should describe the input that we want the person to put in. Um, Now let's, uh, we've gone through kind of the what to test its stuff. Let's uh, dial it back a bit to the, okay, how do I control this new piece of technology on my computer? Chapter three, set up tips. Getting started, getting started. Set up part one. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Anyone who's worked in IT support might be familiar with that phrase. On the desktop, this will normally mean keyboard shortcuts. Um, on mobile devices, this would normally mean a accessibility shortcut, which means pressing a button a few times or holding down some buttons for a few seconds. Um, I like to think that the most important thing that you learn to do with the screen is to turn it off. The second most important thing is to turn it on. Um, I've got some details in the appendix of this slide deck about what these keyboard shortcuts are and what the accessibility shortcuts are on mobile devices, and a few other bits of advice for how to tweak screen readers to make for easier or more productive testing. Set up part two, quiet please, and speak up. On desktop screen readers, you can press the control key to stop your screen reader from talking. It's still turned on and it's ready to respond to your controls, but you just want it to be quiet for a moment. When you want it to resume speaking on Windows screen readers, you can Press the insert key and the down arrow to carry on down the page. Or on VoiceOver on a Mac, you can press the VoiceOver keys and the letter A to start reading um, down the page again. On mobile devices, you can pretty much press, uh, do a two finger tap to start and stop. There's some other stuff going on there, but that's roughly speaking, that's, the, that's what we want to do. That's what we can do. Okay, demo again. Let's do the same demo on the same page but with that little bit of extra context. Number one, the checking the page title. Number two, checking the H1. Number three, checking the headings. Do they look like headings? Uh, anything that looks like a heading, is it marked up as a heading so that it sounds like a heading? And are they nested correctly? And number four, checking some interactive elements. Do they have accessible names? Do they have good accessible names? Let's go back to the browser. Okay, I'm gonna refresh this page. Now I'm going to start my screen reader. Voice over on. And I'm going to press the control key to say shush, please. Um, now the title is WebAIM, the WebAIM Million, the 2022 report on the accessibility of the top 1 million home pages. Cool. Does the title describe the topic or contents of the page? Yes. Now I'm going to press some keyboard shortcuts to jump through the headings of the page to find the heading level one, the H1. Heading level two, heading level two, main heading level one, two items. The webbing million, the 2022 report. I'm going to press control again to make voiceover go shush. Um, heading level one, the web aim million, the 2020 report on the accessibility of the top million home pages. Does that describe the topic or purpose of the page? Does it sound kind of similar to the title? Yes, on both counts. So that seems pretty good. Number three, let's check the other headings. I'm going to work my way down the page using the shortcuts and see, do things that look like headings sound like headings? And do they feel like they're nested correctly? Heading level two, article contents. So after my H1, all the section headings of the page are now marked up with an H2 because they're inside an H1. They're nested inside an H1. Heading level two, introduction. Heading level two, the sample. Okay, so we're back down to this heading level two, the sample. Heading level three, site lookup. Heading level three, method. Are site lookup and method, do they feel like they're subsections of the sample, which is the kind of uh, parent uh, heading level two element. Yep, sounds pretty good. Heading level two, detected errors. Okay, and then the next section is heading level two. Okay, I'm going to refresh the page to do some interactive stuff at the top. Web aim, banner, click. Okay, press control again to make uh, voiceover be quiet. I'm going to look at 
Step four, the interactive elements now. Links, buttons, and form fields. So I'm going to start pressing the tab key. Visit it, link, image, with name, with accessibility in mind. So it's a link. I've visited it, and it's the link text. The accessible name is web aim, web accessibility in mind. It's the logo. It's pointing at their homepage. Seems like good link text. It describes where I'll go when I follow the link. Link, services, list five items. Visit it, link, articles. Services, articles, the link text. Does it describe the destination of the link? Seems like yes. Okay, let me tab, tab, tab a few times quickly. Visit it, visit it, link, community, search, edit text, search. Hmm, search, edit text, edit text, search. It's an edit text, which is what VoiceOver calls a text input. Um, and its accessible name is search. Is the stuff that I type into this box search? Is it telling me what to type in there? Yeah, seems good. I'm gonna press tab again. Submit search button. Okay. Now I'm on a button. Um, I can see that it's an icon. It doesn't have any text there, but the accessible name is Submit Search. What's going to happen when I press this button? Does the button's accessible name describe the action that's going to happen when I press the button? Am I going to Submit Search? Hmm. Seems pretty likely. Voice over off. OK, let's go back to the slides. So that was the demo again. Hopefully that uh, makes a bit more sense after going through some of the details. Number one, check the page title. Number two, check the H1 of the page, the heading level one. Number three, check some of the other headings. And number four, check the interactive elements on the page. Epilogue, how to continue testing with a screen reader. Well, for one, DQ, um, the people who make the X, accessibility checking thingamajiggy, um, have got a whole a bibby of resources on um, screen readers. NVDA, JAWS, VoiceOver on the Mac and on iOS, and TalkBack. Um, they've got web pages and PDF downloads of keyboard shortcuts, gestures, and all these kind of things. Uh, WebAIM has some as well. What else could we test? If we're already thinking like, oh yeah, I could test some more stuff, that'd be easy peasy. Well, a couple of good things to look at next are field help text. You know, like when you're asked to enter a password and it says you must use one capital letter, one lower, one lowercase letter, a number, your favorite emoji, um, and it's got little text under the field. Well, that text needs to be programmatically linked in the HTML. So that when that field gets focus, I hear it's a, um, you know, password field and that its accessible name is password, but I should also hear the related text because I need all of that context together to know what data to put into the field. A related one is error handling or error messages especially. If I go to a field that has an error and it has an error message underneath, in the same way as the help text, it should be programmatically linked so that I hear that error message text when I focus the field that has the error. Ideally, it should also announce that it's invalid or you know, that there's an error there. And related to the other two related ones, uh, focus management. What happens to my focus as I go through the page? And in particular, what happens to focus when I try to submit a form that has errors in it? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, you could go send focus to the first field that has an error. You could provide a list of errors at the top um, and send focus there. Um, maybe even that list of errors could have links down the page to the other stuff that has errors. Um, but that's not really part of this presentation, so don't tell anyone. What screen readers should we test with? Well, ideally, we should test with the ones that our customers use. But if we don't know or we don't have access to those screen readers, some testing is way better than no testing. If you have a Windows machine and you don't have access to a Mac, test with NVDA because it's free and you can grab a copy of it. If you only have a Mac, test with VoiceOver because it's installed on your machine. If you can test with the other one as well, great. But if you can only test with one of them, you might still uncover some good errors that might occur on the other screen readers too and you can fix it and make everything a little bit better. Thank you for listening. Are you, um, are you still here? Well, this is kind of awkward. Um, I suppose I could tell you what's in the appendix.
Appendix. There's a bit about setup for voiceover on iOS, what those keyboard shortcuts are and how to use them. There's a bit about talkback on Android, what that shortcut is and how to use it. There's a bit about MVDA, some little um, preferences and things you can change to make testing perhaps a little bit easier or a little bit um, better. There's also some tweaks for testing on voiceover on iOS, showing the captions of the speech. And the same thing for talkback, showing the captions of the speech. Okay, bye. Alley Camp 2022.